the next F is family. Mm -hmm. So that's a perfect segue into yeah. you went down a, a rigorous road in education that was incredibly demanding. Mm -hmm. I know I'm sure Harvard Business School is probably like a 60 to 100 hour a week enterprise. Yeah. And then you start starting companies, which is like giving birth to this abstraction of a child yeah. with constant demands 24 seven. How do you manage that balance? Mm. Yeah. Like how does the F of family play into the entrepreneurial life of Evan Bear? Yeah. So the the family buckets are um, one is about extended family. So being an intentional, uh, both my parents are alive. I have a grandparent alive. In laws. How do you think about vacations and holidays and intentional time and gifts and celebrations? And my wife has lots of great lines. But weddings and funerals always show up. Weddings and funerals. First one is sort of the extended family. Next would be marriage. And then a third might be kind of nuclear family, including the, the kids. On the marriage side, there's a great line, another one from Tim Keller, and he says, when your marriage is strong, no matter how adverse the conditions are in the world around you, you will go out into the world in strength. But when your marriage is weak, no matter how amazing the facts and opportunities are around you, you move out into the world in weakness. And if you believe that to be true, it just really is an encouragement to invest in building a very healthy marriage, which even the notion of that feels contrarian, feels weird. I think a common image is we began with this, you know, bodily attraction of this beautiful person and we're just going to fall in love and it's just going to be blissful for a long time. And so you hear this about people when they're engaged or a year or two into marriage and they, they flinch and they're like, wait, I don't really think, I don't know if I love this person. What if I made the wrong decision? Well, the data is pretty wild. The divorce rate among arranged marriages is actually really low. And I mean, there are lots of possible reasons for that, but I think one takeaway is that if you're in the general bounds of compatibility with the other person, repeatedly investing in building that relationship will produce a healthy and fruitful marriage. But it really takes a lot of work. And think, many people think, oh, work, I shouldn't have to work. It should just be easy. Right. Um, but it is, it is a lot of work. Work can mean marriage retreats. I used to think, I was really against counseling. I didn't know people. My wife grew up in New York City and, uh, you know, uh, here's my teacher, here's my lawyer, here's my therapist. You know, like everyone does therapy. I just didn't have anyone that I knew of. It's a sign of weakness. It's a yeah. sign of problems. Totally. So I didn't know that at all. And then I had a, a mentor who once said, he's like, look, the world's best athletes have coaches. So if you want a great marriage, of course you need a coach. I was like, huh, that makes total sense. I just expect to be the world's best golfer. And so that probably 15 years ago opened me up to, we need professionals in our lives to help us be great parents and to be in a great marriage. And so we, we love therapy. We've had some great therapists, some terrible ones. We would, uh, in our early years, I was like, oh God, this is so weird. You wear a mask. You don't want anyone to see you going into this thing. Uh, we actually, <laughs> it's like right early on in business school, we went to this one and it was kind of fun because we would go on, uh, I think a Tuesday night and we'd go at six o'clock and then we'd go out for dinner afterwards. And what was fun is anytime we'd get into a fight during the week, we'd say, wait, save it for Tuesday. And we'd have the fight with the therapist. Like in front of him. It was amazing. So really big promoter of, of getting access to resources for mental health. That's been huge for us in, in raising our kids. Our kids have been, they're amazing and they're incredibly difficult and some have more challenges than others, but getting coaches to help you learn some of those approaches along the way is, uh, is super important. So on the marriage side, it's just, how do you invest in that? Someone told me this, they said 10 minutes a day, an hour a week, a day a month, a week and a quarter, a week a year are times that you should have with only your spouse. And so if someone's listening and they don't have kids and they're like, 10 minutes a day, are you serious? Like, <laughs> pretty I'll low with, investment. I'll be with them for hours a day. But it's amazing when you're in the pressure cooker with kids, running around, you fall into bed, you may literally not talk only with your spouse for a few minutes in a day. It's like totally possible that that can happen. So making time, finding ways to invest in that, we did an exercise early creating our family and marriage values, sort of values as a family. Yeah. And we did a little day workshop. We each thought of ones and we kind of mashed them up. They were pretty aligning. And then uh, we framed it and we try to look at it every year as a family and sort of, sort of say like, how are we doing across these things? And so we don't do, it's not a daily check-in on those things. I mean, in a good year, we take a few hours once a year to look at it, but just sort of some kind of North Star of like, what are we about as a family. If you enjoyed this clip, we've got more where that came from. Be sure to check out my full conversation with Evan Baer. And one of the best ways you can support us is to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our interviews and short videos as they come out each week.